Okay, next up we have Yolanda Mayer, uh, who's uh, a friend of Fiona's from a long time back. And uh, over to you. It's very hard to follow those first two speeches. So rather than going for funny, I'm going for small and sentiment. <clears throat> so I met Fiona at university, which I'm loath to admit means that I've now known her for more than two decades, and I'm not loath to admit that I've known her for more than two decades, I'm just loath to admit that it's been two decades, which means that we're that much older. Yet despite this long friendship, I know that many of you here in the room have known her for even longer. Having so many friendships that span that kind of time, as well as so many new ones, is a true testament to the exceptional person that Fiona is. Fiona is a rare combination of true intelligence, great humor and wit, much compassion and kindness, and loads of silliness and fun. And it goes without saying, but I will, true beauty. Those big blue eyes could easily rival that of Puss in Boots of Shrek. <laughs> Despite the many years and all the moves, relationships, children, jobs, and changes that life entails, no matter the time or the distance, from our last conversation, I could always pick up the phone and call Fiona, knowing it would be as though no time had passed since our last conversation. I think back to a phone call that I received from Fiona just over two years ago, when a significant chapter of her life was coming to a close. It was impossible to imagine then that we would be all gathered here today to celebrate two new wonderful additions to Fiona's life. John and David, not to mention all the connections and new friendships that have come with them. I feel like I take some credit for John and Fiona's wedded guests, for I was there the night they met, um, resisting all urges. Uh, I was in the Pan Pacific Hotel staying there, and they were meeting downstairs, and my friends held me back from going down there and doing terrible, awful things, spying on them or coming up and embarrassing her because <clears throat> I really wanted to, but I didn't. And I was there the following day after they had met in the car with Fiona with her grin from ear to ear lighting up the whole universe and her text, I mean her phone vibrating with mm, mm. Well, that's another text message from John. Mm, mm. The whole ride, you know, to the ferry. And, uh, you know, I expressed a bit of concern at the time about, you know, stalker tendencies. <laughs> I don't know about 1,000 texts in the first month of a relationship, as I've learned today. But <clears throat> they were clearly smitten from the moment they met. And I believe more so today than they were even then. I know, John, that you are sharing your life with a truly special person. And judging from her radiant smile and her endless gushing, <clears throat> that she found someone extraordinary as well. So please join me in my toast to the bride, my longtime friend Fiona, and her groom. I wish you every happiness. To Fiona and Will. Does anyone own a Honda Civic RDM 261R? Um, the, the, head, the headlights are broken. It's been overturned. It's been burned out. And there are a bunch of people with C's on their tops dancing on top of it and videoing the whole thing. Don't know. Um, there's one telegram that I'd like to read. It's from Jeanette Blair. Um, and this is in full. Dear Fiona and John, I'm sorry I can't be here to celebrate your wedding with you in person. I'm so delighted for you and wish you every joy in this special day and for the future. With love to you, Sophie, Theo, and David and Iron, Jeanette Blair, kiss, kiss, kiss. Um, and Jeanette hasn't been well lately, and um, our thoughts are with her, and um, we hope that she gets well very soon. So, uh, the joke. <laughs> It'll come soon, but I'm a bit worried that you might not get the joke. So, just just to be clear, I'll touch my nose when you're to laugh, okay? I'll go like that. <laughs> <laughs> 